it this time to talk about this enclosure. Yeah! I redid this huge enclosure some three months ago and I had a crazy idea of introducing another tarantula inside. It was a home for a large Terraforza of physis called Bella and since she is terrestrial tarantula, she only uses the bottom part of the enclosure. So I decided to introduce Avicularia avicularia named Dana and since she is an arboreal tarantula which lives high on the trees, in theory they should never meet and therefore live in perfect harmony. So if you're now wondering why I haven't done a single update in those three months, the reason is fairly simple. There was nothing to update you on. Uh, let me show you, let me explain. I will actually try to be super careful with opening the door because Bella is currently outside and I don't want to spook her, I want to record her really good. So I'll try to open the door slowly. And this plant is actually facing the vibrations straight to that leaf on which Linda resides. So I'm pretty sure that she can detect some movement. And it is nice that she's not choosing to react. Okay, there we go. Oh, she's just gorgeous looking and a little bit fat, which is not a good sign considering the situation. Um, yeah, let's talk about Dana and the reason why there weren't any updates. You see these web trails over there. That is the spot where she was sitting for almost two months. She did web a little bit behind this plant at start, but the entire two months she was just sitting over there. And then after those two months, I could no longer spot her and... Yeah, that was concerning, but I was hopeful at start that she just squeezed somewhere behind because there is a lot of area where she could do that. And I'm still hoping for that, but since I haven't spot her for a month, that hope is slowly fading away. So this is the point of this video. I'm going to scout the entire enclosure in detail, hoping that she's still out there. And if I don't manage to find her, that unfortunately means that she went down and unfortunately Bella grabbed her. So we are going to search to see if we can find some remains, some legs or something. But I'm still clinging to the hope that she was just in the pre-mold and she hid really, really well. But I don't see any webbing and that is what is really concerning. So first I need to remove both glass panels. So I have an uninterrupted access to the entire enclosure. And Bella is still not spooked. I am surprised. As you know, the tarantulas will usually react to the slightest breeze and just bolt in their hide. But she is standing there like a statue. She just doesn't care at all. She knows that she is huge and nothing can really threaten her. But before we start, let's just have a little bit of fun to see how she reacts to stuff. Hmm, still a statue. <laughs> it is so funny. Every time I know it will happen, but I still get spooked. It's because she's waiting so long and then just when you think she won't react... Huh? Yeah, and I still flinched. <laughs> okay, okay. Can I get back my stick? It is just a stick. Trust me, just a stick. Nothing. Her pulling power is so impressive. See? She just pulls it right out of my fingers. What a beast. <laughs> but I still think that Linda is a little bit bigger. Yeah, a little bit. And where are you going now? That is kind of wrong way. Your hide is over there. And look at this web trail. Oh, it is so intense and so pronounced. Crazy. Okay, enough playing around. Let's see if Donna is still with us. First, I want to check up, but I need to turn off this light. Because sometimes I could spot her behind this light. I guess she liked the heat. Yeah, she's definitely not here in between. You see, this is the spot where she webbed. And yeah, this is all her webbing. But she never actually actively used it. I really don't understand why, because this was a perfect spot. Mostly because it would be super simple to observe her. She is definitely not in the corner, even though there is some webbing. So we need to go down and I think there is a hole behind this core bar that goes all the way to the bottom. To over there, so it is a good spot. 
or even inside of this cork bark. Nice place to squeeze, although no traces of web or anything. Just the web from common house spiders. Oh, and she's on the move. She's so big that I could hear her move. You're just going further and further away from your hide, not closer. I always wonder how she navigates. I see that there is, there are lines of web basically everywhere, so she did move here. So I'm wondering if she's using this web, this web trails as a guider or something. You see even here. Yeah, no idea, but it'll be interesting to see where she will actually go and how quickly she will find her hide. That is if she is even looking for her hide, of course. Oh, what? She's gone? I didn't even notice. Let me go to the other side. Ah, she came all the way here in this corner. But if I need, I can also remove these doors. Ah, and we have some sprinkling action, you see? The misting system is going off. It goes off only three times during the day and somehow it feels like I managed to record always at that time. And look, it seems like she's making a turn and currently, look at this, she's actually drinking from the water droplets. <laughs> and at this exact time my light battery decided to die, so a quick replacement. So for all of you that are wondering how my tarantulas get water, well, this is how. They can get the moisture from the substrate, from all the droplets and everything, if you regularly mist your enclosure. Awesome thing that we spotted this. Uh, let's continue with this work. It is incredible how much webbing here is. I mean, from just the regular spiders. Yeah, everything is webbed up. Probably because this is the spot where, as you can see, I regularly dump dead roaches, so isopods can feast on them. You see these guys? So that's why you can also find Little spiders at the same spot. Look how big these guys are. Yeah, they are huge. <laughs> and this spider is actually thinking he's big enough to get that isopod. No way, Jose. Oh, I don't... Oh. Here's the spider, you see? A native spider that looks a bit like a black widow. Yeah, I was fighting with these in the junglearium. They were eating all my isopods. These adults can definitely eat smaller isopods, but in here I don't really mind having them. So how can I actually see behind? Because this is the only spot that I didn't really check in this area. Maybe I can move this around. Yeah, I can. And there is a, I'm not sure how visible it is, but there is a huge hole over there that goes all the way up. So there is still a chance. And I believe this is a dead isopod in the spider's web. Pretty high up, yeah, they can climb. Ooh, I wanted to check what is behind this rock and you see, more isopods. <laughs> nothing, nothing. So I will remove this cork bark to reveal, unfortunately, nothing. I actually found one piece of suspicious web, but it seems like it is a dead end. I must admit that there are a lot more places in this enclosure where tarantula can potentially squeeze than I initially thought, but I think I checked every little nook and cranny, so this is looking worse and worse with each passing minute. Also, just like that web over there, I assume that if she would squeeze somewhere behind those branches or something like that, there should be traces of web for sure, but I only found a little bit over here. I removed it, but yeah, it was a little bit over there and that gave me hope, but I poked behind and nothing came out. So I think that I will start a search for remains now. Yeah, by the way, check how many sprouts this bromeliad has sprouted behind. Like one, two, three. <laughs> when they grow a bit, I will separate them and put in the junglearium. And if you're wondering where Bella is now, she's just standing at this spot. <laughs> Not moving at all. Now, unfortunately, I don't really know what is the spot where she puts the remains. Mostly because they would get eaten by the isopods. But and tarantula exoskeleton should remain visible, I think. At least legs or something. This is the back of Linda's hide. I need to move this, this rock completely so we can check if there is something over there. I think these are the remains of something, right? It is kind of hard to tell. And what is that? I need a tweezer. And it is actually a good thing that Bella didn't hide. Nope, that is nothing. Ah, just the webbing. So no remains over here. Okay, let's close this off. I like the fact that I have an easy access to her hide like this. So if there is a need to check on her, I can easily do this here. And by the way, look at this. What the hell is this webbing? I mean, it is some spider, but 
I'm not really familiar with this type of web. <laughs> we will need to investigate. Although she's now kind of suspiciously close to the edge of the enclosure. I hope you are not thinking what I think you think. Don't try to run, please. Maybe we should drop some roach so she gets something. So she gets some entertainment, huh? I will grab one of these roaches. Not the adult one, of course, because she's so thick. Just a nymph. Oh, an even smaller nymph, you see? <laughs> That should be enough. And don't you dare now leave. Because I have something special. Oh, you see how she immediately stopped. But oh no. The roach went under the leaf. Not good. Not good. We will consider that a snack for later. Bella. Yes, grab it, please. Come on, poke it out. You just dig it out of the ground. It seems the roach stopped moving or not. Oh no, she got it. <laughs> Never mind. And actually from this angle, you should kind of be able to see the pinkish hue on her, on, on her legs, right? Yeah, there is a little bit of coloration. Not just a simple brown tarantula, but a little bit more color for tarantula. And there she goes. Back to her dark den. <laughs> okay, let's continue our search. Now I can actually search here since she... And the roach went... The first one that we dropped, it went into her hide. So yeah, it seems like she will get that second snack rather sooner than later. What the hell is this? Kind of weird mold. And now I remember that I wanted to record that spider. But then I decided that I want to feed Linda. Okay, no leftovers. Wherever I look... Yeah. An isopod. Let's check the other side. Isopods, isopods, spider egg sac. Yeah, nothing else. Definitely not a single trace of spider remains. Let's now check what the heck is that web over there. And if we can poke something. Is there anyone inside? Maybe this is just an old abandoned web, I don't know. Yeah, definitely no spider inside. Although there is still a hole, so maybe it is inside. <laughs> Unfortunately, we won't find out. Okay, I think that there is no point continuing this search. And let me just turn off this light because I cannot really look at the camera. Oh, easier. That's better. Okay, so what I wanted to say. I'm still at 100% convinced that Dana is gone. Just because how many places for tarantula to squeeze and hide there are in this enclosure. And I just couldn't fully check it. So there is still a small hope that she is squeezed somewhere over there waiting to molt. But a lack of webbing is... Definitely, definitely concerning. So, yeah, it just seems more and more that this was just a dumb idea. Even though if no one tries some crazy stuff, we would never get some crazy achievements. So, despite the lackluster result in this experiment, I still think it was worth it. Maybe? I don't know, I don't know. Okay, still more things that I need to show you and we need to discuss before we end this video. From now on, I will try to provide you a more regular updates on animals that we recently rehoused and got a brand new enclosures for. For example, this is an Andu Tripapi. I wanted to test out a new background design. I mean, not the design, but a kind of new way of creating the background. This is a mixture of classic silicone over styrofoam and glue for tiles over styrofoam. I combined the two for the for better looks and more durability, so this is the result. This Nando Tripepi female had a tendency of nibbling the background, but currently, I mean, so far, I don't see any holes in the background, which is very, very nice. I like it. And as you can see, she's mostly just hanging outside, which is awesome thing. I can basically always see her. Awesome thing. And you see the plants are growing nicely. All of them, you see. I'm really satisfied with this result. Now let's go to something more recent. Which are these two gramostolas? This gramostola, as you can see, dug a bit here, dug a bit over there. She's not really using her hide and usually moves in between these two locations. So very nice. And what are you doing? Are you trying to bite the door? Yeah, definitely. You see the fangs? She is actually using them. Should I say she was using them? Yeah, I see it. Don't do that. <laughs> now the other Gramostola, you can clearly see the difference. She webbed much more than Gramostola Pulhra, but she's also not using her hide. Amazing thing. 
I love it so much. Which unfortunately I... Sorry, sorry. Which unfortunately I cannot say for this girl. I mean this boy. I have a heterometer scorpion inside and he's always inside. I never see him, he's always hiding. But the plants are also growing such a good good even these that they brought from his old enclosure they were self sprout they sprouted out of the substrate it looks like some sort of dandelion or something i think that's how it's called in english but the interesting thing is you see during the night the leaves look bent and down but during the daytime they just sprout up really cool thing to see maybe i can show you the clip if i remember to record it of course <laughs> now before i end this video i need your help with one decision it is in regards to next rehouse video i want to rehouse another two tarantulas but you will choose which one they'll be these are the candidates they will all get new enclosures eventually but you will decide which ones will be next first candidate chromatopelmatia neopubestens female of course Possibly soon in a pre-molt. Next one is this gorgeous purple tarantula. Okay, I want to open your enclosure. It is a Pomphobetia species Dominican purple and she definitely needs a bigger enclosure. The next one is this Bolti Birapora diversipes. Oh, you can actually see her legs over there. She does not need a bigger enclosure, but this one is, as you can see, falling apart. So I want to make something prettier for her. The next candidate is this Pomphobetia species Mascara. Freshly molted also kind of needs a bigger enclosure. Or less to candidates, Caribena versicolor, right there. And Petsloteria species lowland, but yeah, she's somewhere hiding inside. Um, you see, they got these old enclosures and I definitely want to replace them. So in your comments below, write your two top picks and then I will see which one you mostly prefer. I know that it is a tough choice, so yeah, <laughs> I transfer that decisions to all of you. Anyhow, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel more, there's a Patreon page and there is a webshop page with acrylic enclosures, plastic parts for glass enclosures, and also there is a link for acrylic dark den enclosures for the US market, thanks to a torrential crypt, so also check that out. I upload on Monday, so see you again really soon. Bye!